Kia ora koutou everybody, um, ko Sophie Hoskins tuku ingoa, uh, I'm the Eons Kaiarahi and we have another awesome uh, video interview um, today sharing a little bit about a program down at Kaikoura High School. Um, so I will pass it over to Anthony to introduce himself and we will crack into it. Kia ora Anthony. Kia ora Sophie. Um... I'm just going to start with a little bit of my hepeha, um, just to keep it tika. Um, so, um, i oi te kani a uh, takarau, uh, e haru taka maunga a uh, te kurangi, te maunga neke neke he maunga tu, tihe mauri ora. Uh, ko Smith te whanau o te taha, uh, ko Rene Van Beltoven uh, tuku hoa rangatira, uh, Ko Xavier Rauri Wood Tokutama, uh, North Whangarei a hau. Uh, ko Anthony Wood Tokuingua, ko he kaiako a hau ki te kura o Waikoura High School. Uh, nō reira, tēnā koutou katoa. Um, I whakapapa Māori on my dad's side. Um, and we whakapapa back to Ngāti Parau. Um, however, I didn't grow up with a lot of that information. Um, I kind of had to learn that later on, but I grew up in Whangarei, which has quite a big um, Maori culture, um, and so I kind of was immersed in it as a young kid. And then my wife and I moved from Auckland. I was I was studying and working in Auckland, um, and we moved to Kaikoura coming up on five years ago now. Um, and so I've been working here for five years. So yeah, that's just a little bit. The first part was a whakatuaki, um from. Uh, te Kani a Takuro, and it just talks about my connection to the Kurangi, the mountain. Yeah, so awesome. kia ora. Um, thank you for the opportunity. Kia ora. Thanks, Anthony, and thanks for sharing um, all that. And yeah, really stoked that you can be with us here this afternoon and uh, um, happy to share a bit about how things are going for you down in Kaikoura. Um, so I thought maybe we could just start with a quick breakdown of what outdoor education looks like within your school. So um, at the moment, um, our outdoor ed course has, um, so I'm the only outdoor ed teacher. It's quite a small school. We've got 200 and a little bit kids. Um, and so our PE department is three people and I'm the only outdoor ed person. Gilda. <laughs> Gilda. <laughs> and then... Uh, that's one of the three. <laughs> um, so we also have um, an emerging nine and 10 program um, with outdoor education at the moment, which is just in the last year, we've kind of gone into that, um, which is a mixture of PE and outdoor education. So for example, Rogaine um, is the stuff we did this term, but we're mixing it in with training methods and things like that and trying to like teach them how to prepare themselves for something like row gaining um and then we have a year 11 um program which has been established for a long time and a year 12 and 13 combined program because we were finding we had such small numbers at our school at that time um our year 13 is like nine at the time we get to year 13 um in the whole year so um it's a bit tricky but yeah so it's a it's a cool program we try and keep it as local as possible um but it, it's um we go everywhere kind of down towards Christchurch and into the St James Trail as well which is in Hamna um for that yeah awesome thank you and um last time we were chatting you were sharing with me a little bit about um the relationship that you've um been developing with mana whenua um down there did you want to share a little bit about um how that started and what encouraged you to connect with mana whenua? Yeah, cool. Thank you. Um, so I guess, so first of all, Kaikoura is like, um, it's seen, I guess, by locals and, and also people from outside of it. It's like a, it's got a Maori flavour to it, I guess, in terms of um, whale watches. It's a very um, big Maori company and we have a lot of stuff going on with that. So definitely it's probably 50-50 in terms of the kids at our school that are Māori or, or whakapapa Māori, not really um, super strong with it. However, it was a combination of stuff, I guess, 
we had a lot of teacher only days a couple of years ago we they were talking about the new curriculum and Mātauranga Māori being an important part and it was the thing was like we were told that it was up to the schools to really figure out what that was and so I kind of took that as a challenge to um, I guess start that journey um, and so that was part of it I think part of it at the same time as Eons were doing a lot of cool workshops and stuff like that I remember going down to uh, Christchurch I'm not sure what the school was but we had some workshops there where um, again there was more people talking about it and so those were kind of the kickstarters of me reaching out and officially I guess um, involving mana whenua um, in the outdoor ed program and it was um, it didn't go how I expected at the start to be honest but it was quite um, like I knew these community members and I knew that there was a couple of um, Māori organisations in town and I had no idea exactly what they did to be honest but I went and approached a lady that I knew um, and to be honest our relationship before that hadn't been amazing it was more me calling her about her kid and issues there or something like that and so she was surprised when I went to her but um, we went into the relationship kind of like me asking for help and I was like, I want to do some more Māori stuff. I want to incorporate it more. And then she was like, cool, if we're going to do that, there needs to be a relationship. We are going to have equal partnership in this. And, blah, blah. and I was like, oh, crap, like straight away. I was on the back foot like, oh, that, that's not kind of what I wanted. And I guess it was hard to hear, but it was really important for the start of our um, relationship with Mana Whenua because their relationship with the school in the past was quite transactional in terms of um, them getting asked by the school, hey, we need somebody to do a pūrāko or whatever it is, and then now that knowledge is with the school, and then them going like, hey, cool, we're done with that now, we can do it ourselves now because we know that information or whatever it was. So I think there was a lot of animosity at the start that that was going to happen. And so they came in full guns blazing and when I was like looking for like, and I have somebody to help with the Pudako for fire building or whatever it was. And so, yeah. And so after that, it, it just kind of, um, it started. But I guess, yeah, it was, it was the, it was all those other things that gave me that kick to even talk to them. And then I just asked the question. And I guess it, it, it literally evolved from there. And, and um, it just, yeah, it sparked that, I guess, um, the start of that relationship and luckily I didn't back down or um, pick up too much of a fuss I guess when I was challenged on that and, and it meant that that relationship continued rather than stopping right there so yeah. Awesome and so how did that look um, different in terms of the relationship that did develop or, or um, maybe some of the things that you weren't expecting that you kind of were like a bit of a light bulb or you know Mm. Um, yeah, I guess maybe maybe changes that you weren't expecting to make um, without yeah. computation or um, other flow-on effects. Well, I think like something that I was I was because I was four years into um, our programs here. I was at a point where I was thinking I was going to put the finesse and the final touches on the stuff that I had been kind of working towards, and so like adding some cool stuff to already cool trips, and then so I was like. I wanted just little snippets to be honest and I was like yeah cool and then it was like nah and then the stuff that I also I guess I came into it expecting little bits of information but the people that were giving it to me also weren't outdoor educators they didn't um, have that kind of way of looking at it so it got broken down to um, what do these kids know anyway because if I'm trying to import at like a year 12 and 13 some really complex ideas like even kaitiakitanga at its higher level then i've had my whole life to kind of learn about that stuff and these kids don't have they have different levels of, of knowing so they were like no 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 like if they don't understand the values at its basis we need to start again at that and so for me i felt like 
that was kind of like, oh crap, that's a step backwards. I didn't really want to do that. Um, but at the same time, it, 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 um, it, it made the program look different, but it made it feel a lot better in a lot of ways. And so it was like, it was way more simplistic than I thought it was needed to be. And in the end, it worked in terms of um, even just like whanaungatanga, you know, even if that's all that we had done, you know, it would have, it's the same as the ABL, it's the same as all that stuff. It's, it's that connection and stuff. And so I think bring, bringing it down to the basics and involving that um, organization that initially seemed really um, like I was watering down the program but I think it actually um, it helped that foundation be a lot better. And, and mm. it also meant that my ideas of how I could incorporate Māori stuff or Mātauranga Māori was like too complex. It was like the kids were not going to understand it anyway, you know, so I just had to bring that down. And, and, and so, yeah, I think that that stuff um, kind of happened with that, yeah. Awesome. And so, yeah, bring, bringing it back a bit. So then where did you start? How did you, um, what did you start with? Okay, so we started with like, I had already had an outline and I gave it to them as like, uh, this is what we want to do this year and this is where I'd like to help. And it ended up becoming, um, I didn't even look at anything that had credits related to Māori um, stuff, to be honest, at that point. I was just... Um, adding flair to what I already had. And then, so what it looked like is, is they were like, cool, if we want to have that relationship, we're going to come in once a week um, on, on like a class and, and we're just going to build some connection and we're going to, um, we're going to make sure that we're, so the, the organization, Te Ahi Wairua, um, we're like, we'll take ownership and, and be, supporting from the side of like those connections to Māori stuff and to be honest the, the, the first thing that we talked about um, was um, what's called a kawanata and the kawanata is like um, basically a contract you know like in terms of like a, an agreement for everyone like you would do like a camp contract or a five finger contract or what anything like that it was like but it was in a Māori perspective and it was like how are we going to have a successful year by making sure we are on the same page with our expectations and foundations? And then that just went through the four basic, um, you know, like uh, values in terms of manakitanga, uh, whanaungatanga, kaitiakitanga, and rangatiratanga. And that's, that was, a, you know, from there, those sessions that we did with them were all about using those and to connect to outdoors better you know and so real basic stuff to be yeah. honest but yeah. yeah but basic but also super important and like you said building those foundations really strong mm. and and at a level that your students can grasp and understand yeah and and it was i think it was um it was it was interesting in terms of like um I guess something I wrote down I, when when I was reflecting on on the thoughts that I was going to put in here is I think we as outdoor educators always try and pass on our like love and our connection for outdoors like to people that's what we want we want them to be enthusiastic and, and keen and I think um, I was struggling to do that a little bit in terms of was creating these awesome experiences but they were it was like skill based in a way you know in terms of we go sea kayaking and you have to show me draw strokes and bow draws and whatever you know and and all that stuff whereas this kind of helped me to get that deeper um connection to outdoors but in a more simple way so like i found like with those sea kayaking trips it was it was so much um ticking off an admin that i had to do while i was on the trip that it just didn't even feel sometimes like you had enough time to to get the rest of the connection and like wow take a look at where we are and you know like yeah. um the Maori side of that in terms of even adding a purako or whatever it is to it it connects those maunga that you're looking at to the area it connects you to 
to that place a little bit deeper. And, and I found like even the values and talking about that and rewarding people for showing those and things like that, um, it really helped to, to try and pass on that stuff that we like, which is that deeper connection mm -hmm. to, yeah. So I think yeah. that that was a big part of how, you know, the program changed at that point. Yeah. yeah. Uh, awesome. I was actually going to ask next how your perspective on of outdoor education has changed, but I think you've kind of nailed it pretty well with what you just said there in regards to, you know, the, the two different approaches. Mm. I think also like um, I think how it changed in terms of my outdoor thing is it's it's it really, like I said, that that focus on connections rather than skills. But I also think it um it I guess it's my outdoor perspective didn't change I think what happened was I just it gave me another avenue to um to kind of connect some of those deeper things within it you know and and it's quite hard to do that sometimes um so yeah and and also like the 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 onset of that because where it started and where it is now that program two years in is a bit different and those new Maturanga Māori standards or the environmental Māori standards have allowed me to now give credits for stuff that is more holistic rather than skill-based as well mm -hmm. again and so yeah uh, my my philosophy I guess has always been um, I don't really care about the credits as as much as that's me being somebody with credits is quite yeah, selfish yeah. for those kids yeah. but it's like I don't care about that it's about the experiences it's about that stuff so it allows me to then cater my program to that rather than that so so this year um we're running our year 12 and 13 sea kayaking program and we would usually go to the marlborough sounds and just be like because it's mellow and it's easy and stuff like that but we're going around the kaikota peninsula which seems really mellow but it's super sketchy sometimes because there's massive roll and stuff but it's so it's not about the difficulties of doing that though it's actually um there's a kaitiakitanga standard um that is part of um i think it's environmental maori standards it's not one of the ones that eons has done i think um yeah. but it's um talking about just where we are in kaikota with tetaio marakura the um the kind of area in the ocean and we're going on a journey and we finish at a place that we um can explore and there's like um diving opportunities and things like that and then we stay the night at the marae and talk about that and it's like not once am i ticking off whether these kids are capable of kayaking mm. like at all you know and, and so that takes a lot of pressure off me as well as a lot of pressure off those kids to do a physical skill well intent instead they're looking at how they can contribute and be part of the area that they're kayaking in and i think that's the the real beauty of that stuff is um is that you know um yeah. And so that's where that perspective has changed a little bit. And my philosophy um, hasn't changed, but it's allowed me to get into that area better. Yeah. 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 And have you seen any um, like changes or shifts within your students or um, students that are kind of signing up for Outdoor Ed or their perspectives changing? Yeah, I think um, we're a little early to see like long term effects, but mm -hmm. like, for example, my year 11s that I had last year who we started this with who are year 12s now they um it was it was it was mixed you know in terms of the opinion I had um kids who were of Māori descent but I had a lot that weren't and it was um when we said we were going to do Mātauranga Māori and, and you know Fire Celeste was going to come in and do this stuff some of them were like oh why do we have to do that and it was quite a negative reaction um but they eventually got to see it. But coming in at year 12, you know, they, they didn't even bat an eyelid. You know, mm -hmm. they were just like, yeah, cool, that's normal. You know, or whatever, that's the expectation. And actually, to be honest, because the relationship this year, um, first term has been really difficult for both of our organisations to link up. So I haven't done as much um, with our Mataranga stuff. They've almost asked about it, you know, in terms of like, why are we kind of not doing that? I will be honest in some ways. Um, some kids, maybe if they were more aware that we were going to have more Mataranga 
purpose because they'd actually looked at their course outline and stuff, it might have turned them off. You know, um, I think some of our kids that have come in when I mentioned that we're going to be doing more at year 11 this year, they were kind of like, oh, like, I'm not really into that. And so it's kind of a tricky one in terms of the, uh, but I think the gain we've had is we've had more people who um, have enjoyed Te Reo Māori and, and we have some other courses, Te Wahoroa and stuff like that, um, that they have another avenue they can do that in. So if that's their real interest, they, they're now doing Te Reo and also they're going to do outdoor education because it furthers that. So mm, I think awesome. ultimately it's it's been more advantageous than um than the opposite. But yeah, there's definitely some people who have struggled with that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Awesome. And um was there did you want to also share something around how you have been using those four uh, Māori values through risk management? Yeah, it's just um and I won't go too deep into it, but at the same time, like I guess one of the discussions I had, and, and this wasn't even my um my initiative, this was the Māori organization, but they they've been doing similar stuff with um wānanga and other things like that, but using those four values to kind of start conversations about risk management, like for example, using Fanongatanga, like we always add into say your Rams form or something like a lost child. Or, you know, maybe even something I used to add, um, which is like a loss of confidence can really affect the trip. Um, and you can talk about whanaungatanga and that can be like the value you associate with those learnings. And so the learnings are happening rather than you taking a, a traditional RAMS form and going through each one of those and those risks, you can talk about um Yes, those risks are there, but one of the strategies is using whanaungatanga or or something along those lines. Or um, one that we use is rangatiratanga, so like leadership in terms of being in control of their own stuff is is um, hypothermia and heat stroke and dehydration, which are you know big ones for any trip. It's it's talking about like I can use the rangatiratanga to help. Um, give another avenue for them to understand it so like i am empowering myself to um to you know like show that rangatiratanga and bring those things that i'm meant to so then that means that that's not a risk in the first place just and and, and i think even just like it took me a while to realize that i could link it that way in terms of like that stuff i don't i don't go um I don't solely use the the Māori values for that, but it, it just means that like it's another way to underpin that, and, and mm. it flows quite nicely um, when you're talking about those values because it it goes from values and our kawanata into um, our trip coming up, and then it also goes into how does that flow between the two? How does the Māori world flow into risk management and and the outdoor education stuff? Yeah. Mm. So it's cool. awesome. Um, there was one more question I was going to ask you, and it was just around um, like advice for uh, other teachers that might be thinking, oh, I really should go and touch base with um, this person, or um, mm. yeah, what what advice would you have if if other teachers are thinking how how can I go and connect with mana whenua or um, cool. certain yeah people within the community yeah well I think um I don't want like my experience of Māori culture in my childhood and and you know um and Kaikota being a strong Māori place um that that shouldn't be a big um it's not a massive advantage like I, I even having all that there I still was uh, unable to kind of like make those connections naturally you know like i had to still reach out and do that but i think if you are in the south island at least you know um there's you know a huge amount of iwi resources online but there's also stuff like um there's a lot of organizations that are connected to kaitahu who um work within the community and maori community um operators what i've seen is they don't have 
exactly super strict, you know, like um, boxes that they have to do their stuff in. So what I mean by that is they will have things that they're doing, like, I don't know, healthcare or whatever it is, well-being stuff. But they usually have like an avenue to to just promote Mataranga Māori or, or Te Ao Māori in your community. So like, if you ask them, they might be keen at They might be excited to to do that. And it might actually fit in with some of their funding stuff. So like I've, I, I have been able to fit in with certain funding stuff so that I haven't had to, there's no monetary, um, there's nothing I've had to pay to have this relationship for two years. And I've had um, someone coming in or multiple people coming in, you know, once a week for a whole year, you know, yeah, so like, incredible. which is pretty amazing, you know, and like, I know that's different um, with the other iwi and stuff like that and the, and the influence they have, but I'm sure there are uh, Māori organisations that if you just looked up and just asked them, they might have an avenue or, or ability to do that. Um, but the other thing I think that's really key and what I got taught by that first kind of uh, meeting I had is you got to come in with a um, a mindset of reciprocal kind of relationships and also like um, actually intentional relationship in terms of like I want to be in a partnership that is looking five years, ten years, whatever you know, like it, it shouldn't be just for this year, you know, or just for that or whatever it is. Like it needs to be like, hey. I would love a hand with this and the relationship is just that it's a relationship. It's not only for the small amount or whatever it is. Um, because I think all, all organizations and all, all um, communities, there, there's, um, there's quite a separation sometimes between our Māori communities and schools and, and, you know, there's a bit of hurt in the past from that. And so, they're going to come in naturally defensive, I think. Um, so if you come in with that open relationship, that's that's the key. And I guess reciprocal, I just wrote a few notes down here on what does that actually look like, a reciprocal relationship. And um, it's less than people think. You know, like I think people think like, man, I've got to go up to the marae with the kids now and we've got to do some planting or whatever it is. And that's cool. That's awesome. You can do that stuff. But I think in its simplest form that long-term commitment and relationship is key because what it does it allows Bano to connect with the school more like my connection with Te Ahiwairo through this has also helped merge the connection with Kapahaka and other things like that and um, I guess a revitalization of that realization of that um, that connection with the Māori organization and our school and so that's starting to, to become a thing where they're keen to reach out themselves rather than people reaching out here with ideas that they have, um, yeah. you know. So I think that's that's the key is just come in with an open mind about that relationship and don't be too scared of letting go of some of that power um, with that stuff because if, if, if you don't, um, they're not, I don't think they're going to be that interested if you just, yeah just want that little bit or you know Absolutely. that's my my program but you yeah. guys are helping me you know something like that yeah. yeah yeah well it sounds like you've um yeah kind of implemented some really awesome foundations throughout outdoor education and and uh, you know like you said you've got these other awesome avenues to explore outdoor education through mm. really cool um is there anything else you want to add before we finish up i think um the only last thing I was thinking of was um, I think to start that journey, have a look at those Māori standards, those ones that Eons has, has done some stuff with um, because sometimes you just need a goal. You know, for example, this one that's on um, describe the relationship with um, a manu, like a bird um, that's significant to the area or something like that. Yeah on your bush trip or whatever, it's so easy to just be like, we talk about that anyway. And we talk about Pudako naturally, I guess, when we're talking about the names of plants or whatever it is and that connection. So just start with that. Like that's that's your goal. It's like, I want to know Pudako about that bird. I want to know 
information about that bird and you could even go to mana whenua and be like hey tell me more about this bird like why is it significant here where can i find it and then that now that's your bush trip needs to go to that part or whatever you know like it it just if you need something simple just start with those standards um and the easy ones rather than jumping straight into like you know the ones where um explain you know to tie all in the relationship and things like that you know because that is awesome and that's where we want to be but it, it's um it might be a bit harder to get your head around straight away rather than a bird or an insect or something like that yeah 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 that uh, awesome some good advice there thanks very much and um thank you for being so open to sharing how things are going for you the the awesome things the challenging things and it's really cool to hear about it Oh, thank you, Sophie.